In addition to terrestrial biomes, the Earth is also home to marine and aquatic biomes. The marine biomes of the Earth's great oceans cover nearly 71% of the Earth's surface. There are four major types of ocean biomes, coastal waters, coral reefs, open ocean, and vent communities. The coastal waters adjacent to the Earth's great land masses have an abundance of life. Shallow coastal waters allow sunlight to reach a variety of forms of algae, and runoff from adjoining land carries valuable nutrients into the sea. Intertidal zones that are alternately covered and uncovered by seawater because of the rising and falling of the tides are home to an incredible variety of animal life, such as various types of crabs, sea anemones, snails, and sea urchins, as well as mammals, such as seals and sea lions. It is in such intertidal zones that life is believed by some scientists to have begun. Just beyond the intertidal zone, lies what is often referred to as the near shore zone. The near shore zone is always covered with seawater, but is shallow enough to allow plants such as huge kelp to anchor to the ocean floor and still reach to the surface. On the west coast of the United States and in other parts of the world, kelp is harvested commercially from these ocean forests to be used not only as food, but also to provide ingredients for a variety of products from ice cream to cosmetics. These nearshore kelp forests are also home to a variety of species of fish and seabirds, as well as mammals, such as sea otters. Coral reefs are a type of marine biome unique to warm tropical waters. Coral reefs are created from the calcium carbonate deposits left by the skeletons of various species of coral and a unicellular form of algae called dinoflagellates. Coral reefs provide a home for a wide and colorful variety of marine life from invertebrates such as sponges and sea anemones to hundreds of species of fish. Out in the open ocean, the depths are too great to allow multicellular species of algae to anchor to the ocean floor and still reach a depth that can be penetrated by sunlight. As a result, the primary food source in open ocean biomes are single-celled photosynthetic phytoplankton such as diatoms and dinoflagellates that float near the surface. The open ocean is also populated by different species of minute animals, which as a group are referred to as zooplankton. The zooplankton, which feed on the phytoplankton, are in turn consumed by various species of small fish and sea mammals, such as the humpback whale. The open ocean is also populated by mammals such as porpoises and other whales, and by a variety of large commercially harvested fish, such as tuna. In 1977, geologists exploring the Galapagos Rift at a depth of over a mile and a half below the surface discovered the first of a unique type of marine biome that scientists now refer to as vent communities. Because of their depth, vent communities are engulfed in total darkness. As a result, there are no photosynthetic organisms to form the bottom of the community food chain. The place of the photosynthetic organisms is taken by sulfur bacteria that obtain their energy from the hydrogen sulfide spewed from the deep sea vents in a process called chemosynthesis. The sulfur bacteria support a community of unique organisms that include tube worms, which can grow up to 12 feet in length, and various other animals such as blind white crabs, white clams, and enormous mussels. Many scientists believe that there may well be other equally unique communities yet to be discovered below the ocean surface. Bodies of freshwater can be classified as either oligotrophic, poorly fed, or eutrophic, well fed, based on their nutrient content. Oligotrophic lakes and ponds are often found in mountainous areas, fed by clear mountain streams and rivers that carry little sediment, and as a result, relatively few nutrients. But the water in mountain lakes and ponds is usually rich in oxygen, as cold water can hold more dissolved oxygen than warmer water. As a result, fish such as trout that need large amounts of oxygen thrive in oligotrophic lakes and ponds. Eutrophic lakes and ponds receive large inputs of sediments, organic material, and inorganic nutrients, such as phosphorus, from their surroundings. As a result of high levels of sediment, these lakes and ponds are often murky. 
High concentrations of nutrients in the water make dense blooms of algae a common sight in eutrophic lakes and ponds. As these blooms die off, they're consumed by decomposer organisms that use up much of the lake's or pond's valuable oxygen. As a result, eutrophic lakes typically have much less dissolved oxygen than oligotrophic lakes and ponds. Eutrophic lakes and ponds are populated by fish such as catfish and bass that are much better adapted to their murky oxygen-depleted environment than are trout. All the Earth's biomes can be disturbed and devastated, both inadvertently and deliberately, by the actions of humankind. Sulfur emissions from coal-burning power plants have inadvertently destroyed both aquatic and forest habitats in various parts of the world through the phenomenon of acid rain. In the past, the grasslands of the American Midwest were deliberately destroyed to provide agricultural land for American farmers. Today, a similar destruction is going on in the rainforests of South America. Some, though, would argue that the conversion of North American forests and grasslands to agricultural purposes was one of the most positive events in human history. Can similar arguments be made about the current conversion of the world's rainforests to agricultural uses? Or do such actions risk throwing the entire Earth out of ecological balance? Finding the answer to such questions through a thorough understanding of the interrelationships that exist between the Earth's living organisms may well prove critical to the survival of life on Earth.